So, uh, I'm Łukasz Danielczuk, and this is Karolina Rorat Hi. and Eva Maniak. Hi. And we all study together at the Warsaw University of Technology at the Faculty of Architecture. Uh, so we decided to enter the microhome competition because we love design challenges that have a real world impact. It gave us a chance to explore how architecture can respond to global emergencies, not just aesthetics. Yes, and more, moreover, motivated us the social need because uh, in the context of Europe and the arrival of over 8 million Ukrainians, we wanted to design something that could be built quickly, relocated easily and also meet the temporary nature of refugee needs, where most people actually declare that they want to return home. And we felt that this challenge was perfectly aligned with our long-standing interest in socially responsible design. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> So we started with a deep dive into previous competition entries, learning from their strengths and limitations. Uh, this helped us avoid repeating past mistakes and instead focus on innovation. After that came a big research <laughs> to find a core idea that we would stick to, coming from the problems of nowadays and tomorrow. When we decided to focus on climate change and global migrations, we dived more into the social research. Later, it was followed by sustainable methods of design and transport that could support our vision. Uh, yes, and moreover, we investigated temporary housing needs, especially how to balance short-term emergency response with long-term sustainability. And we definitely understood that temporary doesn't mean disposable and dignity in living must remain our priority. So when it comes to our workflow, it included a mix of conceptual, technical and visual tools. Definitely very important for us was Miro for communication and early stages for mapping ideas, priorities, research. Then we came to be using the AutoCAD, which enabled us to test different configurations of interiors and grids within the structure. Um, for example, how furniture could fold or slide within just 25 meters square of a space, or how the units could work together in a larger scale uh, when we developed the grid concept. And from there, the model was developed using ARCHICAD, where many structural details were solved in 3D, as well as the aesthetic part. And the final drawings were at the end completed with Illustrator, Photoshop, or with Twinmotion for rendering. And the process was documented using Adobe InDesign, where we developed our board's proposals. There were quite many. <laughs> yeah, for sure, we faced a lot of challenges, but one of the hardest parts was deciding between designing something contextual versus something adaptable. Striking that balance was essential, especially since our goal was to make a globally adjustable system. We also had to choose between a wooden and steel structure. We eventually chose the steel one because of its durability and recycling potential. Over 90% of steel can be recovered and reused in the future designs. Another big issue for us was fitting everything into a shipping container. The module's design had to respond to both logistics and human needs. And last but not least, we face a significant problem with the construction of the module, trying to understand how Kingspan products work and can be assembled together. Since we are just students, it was very challenging, but with a lot of research, watching the manuals and texting even Kingspan, uh, we managed to overcome it. <laughs> The first aid kit is a proposal for how we can bring dignity to people in crisis. It taught us that empathy must be an architectural value, not just a social one. Moreover, we also realized how important it is to let go of the ideas that hold the project back. At one point, we were overcomplicating things. Simplifying helped us to focus on what really matters, mobility, assemble time and community. Learning to prioritize was the key to create something meaningful. And finally, we discovered just how well we work as a team. We learned to listen, negotiate and trust each other's skills. 
which made this process not just a design journey, but a truly collaborative one. Yeah, and the motto for the whole time during the designing process was risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, and fake it till you make it. <laughs>